Hey, I created a Twitter poll and I asked you guys what you want to learn. And everyone ended up voting on a product roadmap SaaS application. If you're not familiar to the channel, in this channel what we do is we take a product and we build the business from scratch. Mostly focusing on your role as an engineer throughout the whole process. We'd learn how to purchase domains, how to plan the technologies to use for your project, database schema, modeling, deployments, payments, billings, every single thing that goes into building an actual business from scratch. This would be very useful to you if you're a freelancer, you're actually working for a company, or you're still in your learning process. So as agreed on Twitter, we are going to be building a product roadmap from scratch. Now the first thing that I always do when I either have a job as a freelancer or as a contractor or I'm working for a business when I get a task is I do some market research. So what I want to do in this video is first we are going to go through the existing projects that are very similar to what we want to build, analyze the market, see exactly what other engineers are doing. Then we are going to go ahead and purchase the domain for our project. And I'm going to be teaching you exactly what each of these mean. So let's get started by hopping into my computer and looking at the alternatives that we have out there. Now, the first one that comes to mind is canny.io and it says build better products with customer feedback. Basically, they provide you with a board and on this board, your customers can create tickets and then you can respond to these tickets and then you can move these tickets based on how your team is going to decide to work on it. So for example, they could decide to implement the feature suggestion from the user or fix a bug reported by the user. So let's just go ahead and see a demo of such a board. And I think ClickUp is one of their customers. So I'm just going to visit clickup.canny.io and this takes us to ClickUp. So you can see that they give you a kind of website where you can track feedback given by your users then there's a roadmap so you kind of organize all your features bugs and everything into a roadmap that we see right here and if you look at a specific roadmap item users can vote on those users can comment and i think that's pretty slick right so you can also switch between the boards when you're viewing right here and you can also create a post and i think that's almost about it right so let's check another competitor and that's um upvoti and Upvoti gives almost exactly the same thing, right? If we check out Upvoti's demo, I'm just going to visit the demo. And on the demo, we see almost exactly the same website, right? There is the roadmap and then there is a list of all the boards. So you can see one of the boards and it's the same format we have on the left, almost exactly the same form. I don't know who copied who, but somebody definitely copied another person, which is nice. And if we check out the tickets, you can see there is commenting and there are people commenting and voting on those tickets. And then there's obviously the dashboard where you get to see all of this information as the owner of the business, right? So that's the second competitor. And if you want to follow along the project and go every step of the way, what I personally advice is that you do a lot of research about these businesses find other competitors and analyze on your own because i've done a ton of research and this is going to help you not only in learning how to do research for your own engineering projects and for the business you work for so you can contribute more value but it's also going to teach you how engineers solve problems in different ways all right because it's one problem we need to gather feedback from our customers. We need to give them a way to tell us what they need. And we need to be able to communicate with them and kind of nail the specific goal or the specific task that they want to accomplish and then put that on a roadmap and either have our team work on it or close out the ticket, right? So you kind of get to learn how other engineering teams handle this. All right, so final competitor is hellonext.co and i think they also have a demo they're doing the exact same thing right so i'm just going to see their feedback board from their demo page and it's, it's it's almost exactly the same design so if you can check out the tickets people can vote then there's an activity session which is different and there's also the roadmap and the roadmap is just a combination of all the tickets that have come into the board and users can also vote on these tickets the bots are also separated like that same design someone definitely copied 
which is good if you're trying to run a business from scratch. Then we have change log and the change log is, I think, another feature. So basically you can give a history of all your changes to your users. All right. So this is what competition looks like. This is what we want to build. We want to build something like this. So what we are going to do is, first of all, see the domain name. So we have canny.io. So I think this is where you just pick a name and it might not be very related to what your business is doing. We have Upvoti. And I think this is where you pick a name that kind of relates to what your business is doing, which is voting on tickets and things like that. And then we have Hello Next. And I think it also relates to the business. So when you're purchasing a domain name for your business, you get to decide what route you want to go. Um, there are some people that just pick random names and there are some people that take a combination of a verb and a noun and then bring those together. I've seen this done a ton at Bycoins. For example, they have a product called Get Cards. They have another one called Send Cash. And I think that would be a fun route to go for a domain name for our product. So after thinking for seven days in a dark room, I came up with AskUsers.io and I think that would be fun. All right. So what do you do when you want to get started with a domain? So a domain basically is a name that you assign to your project. And first you need to purchase one from what we call a domain name registrar. A domain name registrar is going to manage your domain for you most of the time. That's where you would be able to determine where users go when they visit that domain. So for example, when we purchase the domain right now, we are going to do it live. It's going to be pointing to nowhere on the internet, then what would happen is we would finish building our application. Then we would host our application online on a server provider, such as Heroku or Netlify and or Vercel. And we are going to link the domain name that we purchased in the first video to the application that will deploy probably in the last video of this series. All right. So first you need to purchase the domain. So I highly recommend using a service called hover.com and hover.com is going to be really easy to purchase your domain, really clean interface. It's not mixed up with a lot of other hosting things that they are trying to upsell to you. So you can just go straight to what you want. So first I'm just going to search for askusers.io and now we can see that the domain is actually available. So it says this domain is available, get it for your site. And once it's available, you can add it to cart and then you can check out. So 29.99 is actually a really fair investment for a domain that ends with .io. So I'm just going to purchase this behind the scenes. But if you want to follow along, what I highly recommend is checking out some other domains, which might be cheaper so that you don't do so much of an investment. For example, I hope the first person that watches this is interested, but I think you can get askusers.online and this is going to be $4.99. I think there's other domains such as XYZ. And if you check out XYZ, that should be $11.99 more expensive. But yeah, there's dot tech. There's some other dot things that are not, you know, very popular that you can get for practice purposes only. And you follow along every step of the way throughout this series. I think it's going to be the best for your learning experience. So I'm just going to go ahead and purchase the domain behind the scenes. And then I'll catch you inside my dashboard when I'm done. Okay, I'm done. So I have my domain, I've purchased it. So I'm just going to click on manage my domain and it will take me directly to that domain management screen. And right now we are not going to do anything, but I just want to show you one or two things. So you understand what we did. So we've purchased the domain and this is the overview. This is the date when we registered it, which is today's date. This is the renewal date, which is one year later, and this is the renewal price. So for you to continue owning your domain, you have to continue paying for it every year, right? So there is the DNS management. And when we are ready to connect this domain to an application that we've deployed, this is what we are going to do. We are going to come here and we'll create some records depending on the hosting service we use and our domain, when you visit our domain, it would point to our application that we built at the end of the series. So right now, if you visit the domain for the application, it just gives you this nice page that Hover created for us, right? But we are going to be setting up our own application and connecting this domain to it using the DNS, right? 
There's also email and you can handle your email boxes with hover, bird. We will talk about this later. And this is in a situation where you want someone to send you an email, hello at askusers.io or support at askusers.io, which is something we are going to cover in this series because it's definitely something you encounter if you're building a real application. All right. So in this lesson, we touched a lot of things. We learned about doing your market research if you're going to be building an application as an engineer. So you check out the competitors, you see the way they solved the different problems in the business because you're most likely going to be solving those same problems. We also checked out, you know, a number of competitors to see exactly what they were doing and how. I spent a lot of time going through the technologies they use, their API responses, the speed at which their pages load, things like that, which would influence the way you build your project as an engineer. All right. So make sure you go through these, make sure you go through the projects that we've gone through. And if you have any questions at all, please go ahead and drop a comment and I would reply as soon as I can. You can also tweet me on Twitter. And if you have any ideas or things that you want to learn throughout this series, do not hesitate to reach out to me on Twitter and I would definitely love to include it in this series. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you are always up to date when I release new episodes of this series. I'm really grateful that you took out the time to watch to the end and stay tuned for the next episode of this series where we will talk more about planning our project.